All right, what is up, y'all? It is time. Yep, we got to do it. We got to do it at some point. So you know that you want to look, feel, and perform your best. And you want to know how to eat specifically for you. The problem is that even within this realm of real food, there are things that might be problematic for you that you may not realize are problematic for you. So the solution is we just need an experiment to help guide us through the process of taking out something that is potentially problematic, knowing what to look for, and then bringing that thing back in. And we'll come out of that experiment understanding whether this potentially problematic food is actually good for us or not. So in this short video and post, I'm just going to talk about um, why you may want to eliminate cow dairy specifically and how to actually go about it. So if you remember from our definition of real food, we've got the picture of the big plate, which includes animal foods, always using a traditional fat. We've got our vegetables and our greens. And if the majority of what we eat looks like that, we'll be doing pretty good. We also have our smaller carbohydrate plate, which is our sources of dominant starch and sugar. All right, so this is our safe starches and fruits. And then we also have this smaller uh, plate for full fat dairy. Now, because the majority of the foods that we're eating is the big plate, and we're also moderating our carbs with our smaller plate. And then we've got our full fat dairy sprinkled in there. This is a nutrient based way of eating and it's super solid. I think it works for most people. Full fat dairy is extremely helpful for those that tolerate it. The question is, do we tolerate it? So before we get into how we're going to eliminate, let's just talk about the benefits of full fat dairy so that we have confidence in it. It is actually a really good thing for you. It's just one of the things that we want to experiment with to see if it's messing with us. So dairy is a relatively recent introduction into the human diet, but it's still been around for quite a while. It's been around for about 10,000 years plus. We've been making cheeses for about 7,500 years. Um, and because it's been around so long, we're seeing more and more lactase persistency. In fact, 90% of Europeans have lactase persistency, which means they still produce lactase and they can still digest lactose very well. Now, many of the benefits of full fat dairy are actually in the fat, which is why sometimes you'll see me post on social media. And in some of my talks, I talk about like, if you're going to consume dairy, it's got to be full fat dairy. There's no point in low fat or non fat dairy because the fat is where the nutrients are. The fat is where the fat soluble nutrients are. And the fat is where the fat based energy is. Now from a macronutrient standpoint, we've got a complete amino acid profile. We've got healthful fats that we use for structure in the body, and we've also got healthful fats that we can use for energy. Now at a micronutrient level, just some of the things that we like to highlight here that we think are extremely beneficial. We've got decent amounts of vitamin A, the animal based form of vitamin A, vitamin K2, which is something that a lot of us are trying to get through supplementation, which is totally cool. But this is one of the few places that we can actually get K2. Um, we've got fatty acids, amino acids, and we've got medium chain triglycerides. So then the question is, you know, if it's so good for me, then why do I have to go through this experiment of pulling it out? Well, as we've mentioned many times before, as we attempt to master real food for a lifetime, one of the things that we always need to keep in the back of our mind is we always want to be doing an experiment. We always want to be going without something for the purposes of proving to ourselves that we can do it to see how it makes us feel so that we can customize our own personal real food way of eating. So within the real food realm, the main things that are suspect and therefore the things that we probably want to start with as far as experiments go would be full fat dairy, seeds of all kinds that includes hard shell nuts and then legumes, eggs, including egg whites and entire eggs. There are anti-nutrients in egg whites and in the yolk, although the majority of them are in the whites and most people have problems with the whites, but eggs are still something you want to experiment with. Nightshades, the majority of nightshades on this planet are very poisonous to human beings, but we have some that we have bred and hybridized and enhanced to make them a little bit more edible. So these are things like tomatoes and potatoes and peppers and eggplants. And another great experiment is just all plants in general, because the majority of us that have problems within real food are going to have problems with some of the uh, plant anti-nutrients and protection mechanisms. But since we're talking about full fat dairy, then let's just talk about what is potentially wrong with full fat dairy. Well, if we look at the spectrum of dairy and how dairy is created, dairy is created from milk and specifically we're talking about cows. So we're talking about cow milk here and 
we get from milk, we can create yogurt and we can create cheese depending on how we implement some of the uh, beneficial bacteria and microorganisms and how we cultivate that fermentation process. From milk, we can get just the cream portion of it, which we would call cream or heavy cream. And then we can also sour and ferment the cream and turn that into soured cream. And then if we churn the milk fat, we can get it to coagulate and this is what we call butter. And then finally, if we simmer butter at a low temperature, the milk solids come out of the butter and what's left is what we call clarified butter. Um, sometimes we call it ghee, but ghee is technically clarified butter that has a little bit of flavoring in it. So if we look at what's potentially problematic for some people in dairy, first of all, it can be extremely insulogenic, meaning it can spike blood sugar for people in different ways. And we've definitely seen this through blood sugar testing. The casein in milk can be problematic for a lot of people. In fact, you may have heard of things like A1 versus A2 milks, and all that is is different variants of casein that people respond differently to. Some people have a sensitivity to casein regardless of whether it's A1 or A2. Some people are very sensitive to lactose. Some people are sensitive to whey, and some people are sensitive to the phytic acid in dairy. So if we look at that progression of dairy, starting with cow's milk, we have all of the potential problematic factors in it. And as we move across this scale from cow's milk to yogurt and cheese, to cream, to sour to cream, to butter, to ghee, we start to lose those problematic factors because basically we're either fermenting them out and or we're just getting more of the fat versus all the other stuff that could be in there. But regardless, at each step in that phase, there are gonna be some of those problematic factors. So if you're sensitive to dairy, it's worth pulling the majority of these things out. So then the question is, when I'm doing a cow dairy elimination experiment, what things do I need to eliminate? Basically almost everything that comes from a cow, but that would be all yogurts, all cheeses, including cottage cheeses and cream cheeses, all creams, including heavy cream and soured cream. Now in our experiment, this does not have to include eliminating butter because by the time we get to butter in that whole progression, it is almost pure fat and it's void of the majority of the milk solids. And in my 10 years of doing this and working with people, I have only seen a few people that were so sensitive to dairy they could not do butter. What we're looking to do is eliminate the dairy products that have the highest potential to have the highest amount of these problematic factors. Now we have a lot of other things that are allowed that are not considered cow dairy, but are great replacements for some of the dairy products that we're giving up. And so we have a post on the best alternatives to dairy that you can check out. And then because this experiment is specifically geared towards eliminating cow dairy, then it's totally fine for you to experiment with some goat dairy and or some sheep dairy. So here's how we're gonna do it. You're gonna choose a start date. And for most of us, it's easiest to start on a Monday because we got the weekend that we've been able to prep and then we're getting into the work week and the structure of the work week for most of us makes it easier to do an experiment. Now, I would recommend planning it far enough ahead that you have enough time to consume the dairy that you have in your fridge. And for most of us, that's gonna be about a week. And then you'll commit to no cow dairy for a minimum of two weeks. Now, as you're doing this, you're looking for some specific changes. And I'm gonna give you some ideas here. Some of these things might be subtle, so the more self-aware you are, the better. And having an intention going into this experiment to really pay attention to these types of symptoms would be really useful energy levels in general, digestion in general, and for a lot of people that would mean less constipation, less acid reflux or heartburn, less gas and bloating. Look for skin issues to resolve. So specifically, maybe look for red patches to go away or irritated itchy skin to go away or some pimples or what looks like acne to go away or clear up a little bit. And then joints. A lot of people, if they're sensitive to dairy, they're gonna have a little bit more inflammation and pain and tightness in their joints, so maybe look for that to improve. I think the pulse is something great to pay attention to. So if you take your pulse before going to bed, upon waking up and throughout the day, just getting some baselines there. I've noticed for myself when something messes with me, I have an increased pulse rate. So definitely pay attention to some subjective things like sleep. How is your sleep changing? How is your mood? I can tell you right now, my girl, when she's on cow dairy, even in small amounts, her mood is completely different than when she's off of it. And then mental clarity and focus. And then just overall, how you feel in general. If you really have this intention of having some self-awareness with this, you'll know pretty soon whether this was a good experiment for you or not. Now, some of us will notice a tremendous benefit, some of us will notice just a little bit of benefit, and some of us won't notice anything at all. And some of us will go into this thinking that we don't have a problem with cow dairy, and we'll come out of it realizing that, hey, I thought I felt good before, but I feel even better now. So regardless of what your experience is with this, 
please share your comments in the post associated with this so that others can learn from this and others can support you throughout the entire process. And as always, questions, comments, snide remarks, send them our way, and y'all keep it real.